This is the MT Predictor weekly update for June 12th. Uh, I've got the Dow daily chart. We've been tracking this one for a while, and I'm going to put some analysis on here. We'll take a look and see what's uh, what's going on here currently. Uh, if I put the major analysis on here, and you can see we had our major five wave pattern up in the Dow. This was our minimum wave five resistance. And the typical wave 5 was up here. We didn't get to the typical wave 5 resistance. We got to the minimum wave 5 and have pulled back here. If I look at the intermediate pattern, you can see we had an ABC pattern here. Now this B swing, if I take our decision point tool, which looks for potential market turns, you can see we came... Uh, as we suspected into this 12,000, Dow 12,000 area, they actually overshot it down to 951 uh, was the close on Friday. Uh, but we're into this decision point support area. Now, if we go to the weekly chart, you'll see the weekly chart had a DP sell signal up here with the target down here around 11,000, uh, 11,400 area. So let's pull up the week. So we know we've got support in here now around this 12,000 area, which we expected. Uh, the thing is now, are we going to see this DP get taken out to the downside? If so, we may see this 11,400 area. Um, so let's bring up the weekly chart here. Now on the weekly chart of the Dow, you can see uh, we've got a decision point sell signal uh, that set up uh, a few weeks back and you can see the target on this is the decision point off the prior swing this is the wave 4 swing I was showing you on the daily chart the major wave 4 swing here and uh, so there's the, the uh, bigger target 11,390 so if the current support gives way then we'd be looking at this uh, for this to actually play out similar to what we had back here on this uh, decision point earlier when we got that correction and that was a nice uh, correction there to the prior uh, DP off the prior swing there so similar uh, setup here um, and we'll see if we get down there again we're in daily DP support now this would be the weekly support off the prior swing so uh, we'll see if we get a bounce here uh, off the daily, if not, if they take the week, uh, the uh, daily support out, that DP support we're looking at, then we'd be looking at the next leg down at 11,400 area. Uh, next up, we've been following the daily chart here of Goldman Sachs, and you see we had a uh, uh, swing high back here. We had our Holy Grail short trade down to a wave three target you actually had another sell signal to the TS3 there now we've got a decision point long signal so right in that area where we expected to find support look we had the same DP setup if I can make this a little a little bigger here okay this time last year this is actually this DP setup uh, let's see July 1st we had actually one uh, DP that set up first uh, June June 10th okay today's June 12th this was June 10th of 2010 we had a DP set up and then a lower DP set up the next month on July 1st uh, DP and this is where we are now of course June 10th uh, I'm sorry this one set up actually June 8th uh, we're currently it's uh, June 12 so on the 8th you can see similar setups uh, last year and of course those did play out you got a nice leg up uh, some more selling but eventually went on to to a higher highs here so we're gonna see do we uh, see a similar pattern to what we witnessed last year actually going back a couple of years because this $130 area in Goldman Sachs has been support the last two years. Um, so we, uh, we've got a target there of 143.65 on this one. Uh, we'll see if this is a false start and we get a lower low, maybe down to the 130 area and then another DP long. You know, we do have a little bit of divergence here. 
at a lower low in price and a little higher low in the oscillator. That's why the DP signal is there. Um, and we'll see if it is a turning point. So far it's uh, had a few days of bounce. We'll see if it uh, continues there. Now, obviously, if uh, you know they do fail and they take out that 130, 125, 130 area, then we could see more selling. I mean, the next major supports would come. Um, you know, you'd have to get all the way down to the $75 range. So, uh, an important area here. We'll see this you may have important. Uh, um, hold some important uh, insight into what's going to happen with the major markets here as G Goldman Sachs we're using as a proxy for the banks in fact we can take a look at the the uh, BKX the uh, banking sector and uh, Drew you see you got maybe a little head and shoulders pattern forming here if they take out the the neckline uh, somewhere on that $42 area uh, you could see the uh, $24 or so area down here a measured move down on that uh, BKX so far you know it's 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 holding up kind of consolidating in this area gone flat uh, but we'll see so keep that uh, in mind because it's gonna be tough for the for the uh, markets especially at market tops you'll see when the banks are leading market moving higher and then the when the banks uh, begin to underperform you know you've got to you got to uh, take that into account and realize that something may have changed well obviously the end of this month or almost into the middle of the month here at the end of the month the QE2 ends uh, no plans at this point uh, according to the Fed for any QE3 or QE2.5 or uh, something but you know most analysts are looking at if the market does fall apart that we will see some QE3 or something maybe something a little different um, uh, to uh, to keep the market uh, propped up again uh, this Fed the prior Fed have all uh, made it known that they will not allow the the equity markets to uh, be the straw that breaks the camel's back uh, and uh, and and uh, you know this economy again uh, some talk of it slipping back into recession uh, you know we're going through something that Japan has gone through you know they're on QE5 and they you know uh, go into recession, they come out of recession, they slip back into it, they come out of it, uh, and maybe we may be following that kind of same pattern. So um, you know, we'll see how the uh, the market plays out. If it can hold these levels, the banks hold these levels, if Goldman uh, makes another uh, uh, rebound, as it has done uh, the last couple of years in the uh, support area that it's in, or if things change. And if things change, then we know to expect something different. Um, so it should be uh, should be interesting. Let's take a look now. And I'll finish up with some gold and silver here. Uh, silver. Uh, we had wave three up. We came into the wave four support. Had that real hard uh, correction there, and uh, you see it's just kind of gone sideways. Uh, we may see more of that uh, through the summer. We'll see. Uh, you can see the 200-day moving average down here, sitting uh, around. Now, right around thirty dollars, thirty dollars and fifty cents or so. We're trading uh, thirty-two, uh, sorry, thirty-six dollars and twenty cents. I guess was Friday's close there, and we'll see if it, you know, holds here. Uh, you know, silver will tend to follow gold, of course, and uh, gold has held up. It's had a bit of a correction there after the wave five up. Uh, the correction has not been very deep at this point, sitting at. 1532.50, and uh, uh, so we had a major high in here, uh, kind of a a smaller uh, correction. It's held up pretty well. It's kind of you know begin floating up. It's still kind of in consolidation, similar to silver, but we never got below the 50-day moving average. Like I said, we get below the 50-day uh, and above the 200-day, that tends to be a very good opportunity to to buy not only gold but also to time your silver purchases and uh, like I said the MT predictors had some very very good um, buy signals in the daily gold chart as the 50 day comes below or the uh, price comes below the 50 day and above the 200 day you know nice TS4 long setup there um, that was a very uh, huge huge trade on the daily chart 
So at this point, uh, gold and silver kind of going sideways. You know, uh, we really haven't had a harsh correction in gold uh, compared to what we would expect. Uh, typically, this correction could come all the way back to the wave four DP. If I put that on here, okay, that would be all the way back down to twelve around the twelve eighty area down here. And that would be well below the 200-day. Well, the 200-day moving average has not been violated in you know, at least a couple of years uh, in the gold market. So this has been a very good buying opportunity as uh, if gold comes down here. But they haven't been able to get it down there, even below the 50-day. Uh, yeah, like I said, you've got to go all the way back to um, February um, of this year was the last time that we were below the 50-day. So uh, probably about four months or so, and uh, so watch for that and see if we do get below the 50-day, above the 200-day, be another potential uh, buying opportunity in the gold market and the silver markets. Uh, the next resistance level, the DP off the wave five swing here, and here will be your next uh, resistance area that should start right around the 1590, uh, 1591 area 1600 area in gold which obviously would be a new high all right so we'll leave it there we'll pick up and uh, see what this week brings and we'll come back and evaluate things next week and see where we are